Hey Libra, I'm Empress Rose. Welcome to your reading and happy birthday. Uh, these are general readings, so we take what works and we leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. And I don't, if I don't catch your wavelength on this reading, go check your other major placements. Major placements are Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So we're going to start off with the Botanical Inspirations deck for a little Botanical Inspiration, and then we'll move to uh, the Golden Tarot for a more traditional tarot spread with some really traditional um, artwork. <laughs> And then, uh, and then we'll probably end up with the Kuan Yin, wild Kuan Yin, to give us an inspiring little message. Okay. Bam. Oh my gosh, we got a lot. You got a whole bouquet. Oh my gosh, happy birthday. It's your birthday bouquet here. This is a very beautiful bouquet. Um, oh my gosh, we have sacred lotus, enlightenment. No mud, no lotus. Thich Nhat Han, but I think it's been said a million times. So lotus depends on the mud. It's what, what thrives off all the shit and garbage we go through. If we want to grow, we can grow into a beautiful flower, a symbol of peace and personal growth, enlightenment, growing from the garbage. Um, A Glauxinia. I, I was just thinking about cows. I used to have cows um, and the manure was wonderful. Uh, lots of flies. Lots of flies made it into the house and, and in the barn. But, um, but it was amazing to put it on my garden. Like everything grew so well and so amazingly. So just thinking about shit and growing things and the best flowers and the best tomatoes and the the greatest stuff. I mean, I don't think that you have to go through a lot of pain. You have to go through a lot of pain in order to become a cool person. Um, and certainly lots of people go through a lot of pain and become trash heap persons that just produce a lot of shit themselves um, for other people to grow in. But if you do want to grow something, yeah, if you are learning from things, that shit, that shit's beautiful. It, it can, you can turn it into something very beautiful. And then we have this Glauxinia, love at first sight and proud spirit. When I saw you, I fell in love and you smiled because you knew. William Shakespeare. Oh, Glauxinia. I don't know that I've ever met a Glauxinia in person. Um, love at first sight and proud spirit. Falling in love with something. I think this is more like, because not all Libras are going to be falling in love at exactly the same time in lockstep. And love at first sight can be a little weird, but... Um, it is about kindred spirits, meeting something that's very kindred to you, that, that matches your energy, your energy signature. You recognize it as something that's for you. Coreopsis, always joyful. Write it on your heart that every day is the best day of the year. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Man, this little Libra bouquet is really making me happy. Enlightenment, love it for sight and proud spirit, always joyful. And then some of it, Thich Nhat Hanh, Shakespeare, and Emerson. Man, these quotes are just gorgeous. And unknown, I love unknown. And then we have Lily here, majesty and virtue. The lily is the emblem rare of many virtues, good and rare. Majesty, virtue, pride, being proud of who you are, being happy. Oh my gosh, Libra. We just totally got a birthday bouquet here and it is happy and beautiful and lovely and looks like it, it's at the end of a little shit rainbow. We got our birthday pot of gold here of beautiful flowers. Shit rainbow. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the opposite, you know, of a rainbow. It's like a whole shitty thing. And then at the end. All right, Libra, we're moving on to the Golden Tarot here. Medieval and Renaissance art collages. Man, that bouquet little really cheered me up. I, mean, I feel very energized and happy by it. Here's your past, your present, your inner landscape. What's at issue? Your environment, your to-do list, and your possible outcome. Hey. Mostly? Wow, really beautiful, really, really good. I like it, I like it. I don't know what to do with that guy. And this one looks a little weird too. This one looks a little, uh, okay, well, you know, whatever shit we get here, 
we'll make the best of it and we're going to grow no matter what. We're either going to learn or we're going to be successful. Every experience offers us one of two choices. Not every, but yeah. We're either going to learn or we're going to be successful. Is it going to be awesome or we're going to like grow into beautiful people from it? Here we have in your past, we have 10 of coins, happy, peaceful home life, lots of money, abundance, um, a good home, um, enough money for everyone's hobbies and enough. There's been some sort of abundance that's been present in your life recently, um, either money because we've got coins, so 10 of coins. So either some money situation here where you've had enough, you've had some successes, um, a family, a happy home, your house, um, your house, your career, your job, something's brought you a lot of happiness and your family too. There's just, this could also be family money, inheritance, legacy thinking, uh, wondering, you know, thinking about inheriting something or bequeathing something. Um, but just a lot of happiness. It could just be a very fulfilling work situation. Um, how you're bringing home the bacon is really like makes you happy or there's been happiness there there's maximum fulfillment in your work situation or or in something like that so very fulfilling energy either about money or work something great happened uh you got maybe the the maximum the biggest coupon you've ever gotten you got um a debt cut in half, you know, you, you, you did really well here. You got the most that you could have gotten out of that situation. In your present situation, we have six of cups. This is somebody from your past or some sort of past vibe coming in here. And you're just chilling. Like, it, like I was talking about that energy signature that, um, that, you know, love at first sight, this could have been some sort of love at first sight situation coming back into your life or, or something that you recognize that takes you back into this imaginative place, this place of play, this place of joy and playfulness, um, really connecting to something. It is sort of that, that energy signature that you shared with someone long ago um, or some sort of hobby or job or work or something like that, some sort of idea that was very emotionally fulfilling and growing. Oh, look, inside the cups, we have flowers. I mean, I don't know why I said, oh, look, because that's really literally the feature of this card in almost every deck. Inside these emotional cups are flowers, but it's just reminding me of the lotus flower in the pond, you know, and then, I mean, we're talking mud, but it's also in the pond, in our emotional cup. We have these beautiful flowers growing and something flowering, something flowering in our emotions that's bringing us back. This could be someone from your past. Very pleasant memories, though. We're not talking bullshit. Um, we're talking pleasant memories, someone you connected with whose energy signature of really you vibed with really well and um, you were able to play with. It was sort of a yes and relationship and not a no but um, thing. It was a it was a let's let's and then we do this. Yes. And then we do that. Yes. And then and then growing and playing with each other. Really playfulness um, with with um, and recognizing someone or something or a, a situation from your past. There's a lot of imagination going on here, a lot of playfulness going on here. What you're hoping for, this page of cups, you're hoping to learn about your feelings, your intuition, your what makes you happy. I mean, there's some something surprising here in your emotional cup that's come in and kind of caught you by surprise, has gotten you very excited, but also very focused. Messages coming in, there's sort of this storm going all around you and you're like, but what is this? Oh, what is that? I'm very fascinated by that. I'm very excited by that. So it's really focusing on something. Look at it. They're like looking eye to eye. Like she's like, they're like, this is love at first sight. It's this fish. You're falling in love with a fish. Look at they're gazing at each other. There is something about first sight here. It's like this gazing at each other and being really intently focused on this fish, this surprising thing that has come into your cup. So we have six of cups. 
this um, this growth, this emotional growth, this nice vibe. And then we have Page of Cups. We're like, Hark, what is this? So you're thinking really about like, what is this surprising thing here? What have I found? What is this? And you're wanting to learn. The pages are the learners. So you're learning about emotions, exploring them, figuring them out. There might be some messages coming in here um, or you're hoping for some messages because this is your hopes and fears and what's going on in your inner landscape. They're, the Page of Cups is a quintessential inner landscape card. I mean, it's just like looking inside your heart, looking at your feelings and being a little bit surprised um, by what you're finding there. And it could be freaking you out, but you're still not dropping the cup and running away. You're sticking with it. Um, and you're not getting totally freaked out and running off screaming. You're just like, oh, right, what is this? This is like, remember last week, I don't know if it happened with Libras, but a lot of people got the moon card right here. And we were talking about um, the crawdad I met down at the river and how he was trying to eat me. And I kind of freaked out, but then I was like, ah, what would have happened? What would have happened if I would have turned around and played with that crawdad? So this is in a way like turn, she's playing with the crawdad now. She's going to go explore and see what there's this fish in my cup well maybe i can get be friends with this fish can i be friends with this weird thing i found in my emotions maybe and so it's just the emotional exploring learning about your heart learning about something and being very fascinated by it what's the issue here is this knight of cups oh we have another cup okay we don't have too many cups we don't have too many cups so that it's dominating we just have three cups here but so there's a lot of emotional um, emotional relationship stuff going on in this. This Knight of Cups, this would have been um, in the upright, uh, maybe slightly brave emotional message and offer, an emotional offering. In this same tumult, in this exact same sea, we have the page followed by the Knight, except for the Knights in reverse. So uh, there could be somebody just kind of playing with emotions here some insincerity insincerity to an offer coming in or an offer that was expected but never received never offered that's the not offer coming in um there could be messages here again both of these page of cups have some these page of, these both of these the page of cups and the knight of cups so the knight of cups doesn't arrive doesn't show up this message or it's drained. It's not excited. It's not brave. It's not strong. It's not stable. There could be some emotional manipulation going on here. Or something not coming in. Because the Knight of Cups would be um, something coming. The Page of Cups is sort of this discovery. I've discovered something. And the Knight of Cups is I am bringing something. I arrive with something. We've got the horse. The horse is about movement and arrival. So if the horse is in reverse, it could be no emotional movement is coming. The emotional, the offer isn't coming in. Or there's no movement. Or somebody's stuck emotionally because the Knight of Cups would be bringing in a love offering. I mean, he's suited up. But, you know, there's this tumult, tumultuousness and this, this Knight of Cups is supposed to, it, it's not, it's not, there's nothing on offer. I mean, you're hoping to find this cup, but maybe you don't. Wait, I liked this reading until that. But that's what's at issue. What's at issue is a message or some sort of emotional instability. The Knight isn't stable. Either the Knight's not coming or the Knight's not stable or the Knight's not coming because the Knight's not stable. And there's no movement. There's no message. You were hoping for a message. You're hoping for something in your emotional cup, some surprising thing in your emotional cup. But it's not there. In your environment, you have the three of wands. You have some sort of ships coming in, um, external to you. You've intuited them. Um, in your environment, there's some sort of highly intuitive situation unfolding um, where something's coming towards you that maybe you've waited for, maybe you understood a long time ago this ship was coming in. But this is, this is something in your environment is really calling you to tap into your intuition, to get very clear on your intuition. Maybe this isn't brave. Like maybe you need to more to be more brave, but something in your environment's really asking you to tap into your intuition, intuition, because there's some sort of ship coming in and you know it, you know it, 
And, and something in your environment is asking you to trust that, to believe that, to believe the promise of these wands, that it's coming, something's coming in, and there's something in your environment that's changing, that's shifting, and it's asking you to have a lot of faith. So there's something in your environment asking you to maintain the faith, maintain the belief and the trust in your dream and in your vision. Maybe it's, it's that this isn't coming in, but don't give up faith. Like there's something here. There is something here. Or there's something in your environment that's just really asking you to, to even further engage with your environment. I mean, to, with your intuition. And then we have the energy you're supposed to come into. Highly ambitious. Uh, willing to climb the corporate ladder, money on the mind. I mean, we started off with this 10 of coins, but really focused on your money, on your career, on your job, on, um, on improving it, on uh, learning the next steps, learning what's going on. Um, she's very focused on her money and her career path. That's the queen of coins. She's ready to go get what's hers, to bring in that harvest. I mean, her whole hate, I hate, I don't necessarily generally like this energy, her energy here, but, um, but that's what your to-do list is, is really focus on your career path, really focus on leveling up. She's very much about leveling up and going, going beyond and climbing that ladder in one of my decks, um, which I'll pull out here soon in a couple of weeks because it's the, um, Santa Muerte deck. And I think that would be good for the end of October, beginning of November, um, but in that deck, she's literally climbing a ladder to go get the fruits of her labors that she's worked so hard for. So this is you being very focused on your job. And, and it's sitting right underneath the Six of Cups card, which is interesting. So maybe there's something that's sparked your imagination with your work that's taking you back to a more playful place and you need to climb that ladder. Or maybe there's this this connection that's been made or this it's sitting under these cups there's all these cups there's an emotional thing going on but you need to get focused on your career you need to get focused on leveling up on your job and the queen is very focused on her on her work on her job on what she needs to do to level up she's very focused on that she's not um on hers it's not about the whole families like like this in a way is about you a focus on the families um finances and everybody getting what they need and the king of coins is about taking care of the kingdom's whole finances and and working hard and methodical towards that this is working hard and methodical towards um a career goal um and and her career goal her her goals her dreams, working very hard towards that. Um, and there's the sapphire here. Uh, there's being loyal. And the sapphire is about faith, having faith, which we're having this have faith here, right? Um, something in your environment is asking you to have faith. And this is, okay, I have faith. So much faith, I'm going to get to work. And I'm going to work hard. And I'm going to be very focused here. Man, I feel very focused reading this. Like, yeah, work hard. Get focused. Um, uh, it, I didn't even have, like, I mean, I did have my afternoon coffee, but not that much. But I feel very excited and focused here on, yeah, let's go get it. Um, and then a possible... Also, the outcome here is Five of Wands conflict, conflict of priorities, conflict of um, people, you know, doing a battle of their egos as a possible outcome. Um, people, yeah, battling each other and um, arguing co a contest. Maybe you're competing. Maybe you don't even realize that you're competing here because we have this Three of Wands and then we have this competition. And maybe you need to get competitive. Start to really focus on something to a degree where you can you can be a little competitive, not obnoxiously. So, um, but but being there's a competition here, or there's an argument, 
or there's um, conflicting needs that are going to be like battled out. There could be a battle looming here. Um, and you need to you need to fight for yourself and your money and your job and your you need to be really focused on that so that you can come into this knowing exactly what you need, knowing exactly what you want, knowing exactly where you stand and what you're willing to do and um, what your priorities are. So this card has, also I wanted to see if we have, um, I wanted to see if we had lilies, because uh, this card, this deck often has lilies, but we got all the cards without the lilies, it looks like. Um, so, um, and then here's your Kuan Yin, wild Kuan Yin uh, card. There seems to be like a little bit of jealousy, feeling a little left out, younger sibling getting all the attention. Um, but let's see what it says. Um, so there is like some sort of playful energy here too. Um, so there's, there's that playful energy we've been talking about, um, but also, I don't know, I can't tell like if she's jealous or angry or just, thinking. Okay, medicine of the Divine Mother. Choose your divine medicine to feel grounded and peaceful. Your morning walk, daily prayer, or yoga class, your time to dance each evening or meditate, to do an oracle card reading, or sit quietly with a cup of tea and reflect upon what you are grateful for in that moment. Simple daily routines done with awareness allow you to feel my love for you. So I don't know how that matches the picture. I wish I knew. But anyway, in the picture, we have a lot of dragonflies, which are messages, divine messages coming in. We have a playful relationship, and we also have taking time out from, from things. There could be some imbalance and unsettled energy coming in here, um, and so you need to ground the, there, are, there could be a lot of messages coming in and you needing to ground in that because there's um, some, un, some playful but unbalanced energy that could be coming in and you need to focus on what you need to do, focus on your routine, um, focus on your um, daily, acts of daily, what do they call that? Acts of daily living? No. Yeah, something like that. You need to get you need to feel that groundedness and um, I hate daily routines but but oh well, lots of people benefit from daily routines do the same thing every day as if you are a prisoner um, so anyway Libra I hope that that was helpful for you that had such great energy to me except for then we end up in an argument which Libras don't like or, or competition of wills or some sort of competitive thing I think Anyway, um, hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for your likes, subscribes, and comments. I really appreciate them.